Paul W. Downs is the multi-talented uh, be behind the scene talent of Hacks, uh, writer, director, showrunner, EP, and plays Jimmy on, on the series. Uh, Paul, so nice to be with you today. Um, Thank I want to start. I want to start with your role as writer. Um, so the end of season one introduces the idea of Deborah going on tour. That's kind of where we leave the season. So when you were kind of creating the idea for season two with Jen and Lucia, you know, what was so exciting to you about bringing these characters outside of Vegas and hitting the road and going on tour? Well, you know, Vegas is already this sort of like desert oasis, this place, um, you know, outside of New York or LA or a lot of like the entertainment world um, where Deborah Vance has kind of built this fortress for herself and putting them on the road to us was just sort of deepening that, you know, it was going like the next step of having these two women be fish out of water. But now Deborah is, um, instead of being a big fish in a small pond, she's a big fish in a huge pond. Um, and so it also allowed us, I think, to, you know, really evolve their relationship and deepen what we see between them because, you know, when you're on the road, it's a real test. And we've always said this show is a love story. And if you've ever traveled with um, even a friend, much less a romantic partner, it can test your limits, you know, and being in a confined space. So it just, it was something that we were like, oh, this will be really exciting to see them interacting with different characters on the road and um, also being confined to a, a bus together, especially with this sort of email looming. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you next. Um, you know, the first season, there's such a complex and interesting relationship between Deborah and Ava, and it goes, it gets even more complicated um, this season, as you're saying. So what were some things you wanted to explore uh, about their dynamic as, you know, now you're in season two, more episodes to explore their characters. So where did you want to take each of those characters this season? Well, you know, we, we wanted to do two things. One, I think we want to have a little bit of a resetting of their relationship because the kind of dark mentor, nightmare boss um, dynamic that they have is really central to the comedy of the show and is really fun, you know? Um, everybody, I think, can relate to having somebody who is their tormentor um, because Deborah loves to torture. She loves to tickle. Um, and so we wanted to kind of reset the relationship and um, allow them to have some tension, but also we wanted to evolve it and go deeper. And I think what truly what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And so putting them um, sort of on this crash course uh, to get to know each other better and also to really be vulnerable with each other on the road, um, I think allowed us to do that. You know, Deborah has been this, uh, she's been a road dog in the past and she's done tours, but for a long time, she's had a residency and been very comfortable with a show that has its own audience in Vegas. And now she's kind of starting from scratch. And so what that does to her psyche, um, I think makes her relationship with Ava even more necessary and more important for her. So even though, again, there is tension between them, you know, they really need each other, especially when they're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, no question. Um, you also direct two of the episodes this season, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask, when you're breaking the season, how do you know which episodes you want to direct? How do you go about picking, you know, which is it, is it plot based? Is it, you know, the logistics of, are you starring in the episode? What is it that really makes the decision for you? That's one of the things actually, because I, you know, because I played Jimmy on the show and because, you know, being an actor on the show, I think all power to the actors who direct themselves. I prefer, I think, to direct episodes that I'm in less. Um, you know, I, I am in episodes that I directed this season. And so you do have to kind of put on all the hats at once. Um, but that's one thing that I, I like to do. But it is honestly, it's just production logistics more than anything else. It's not like I pick and choose which episodes I do. It's kind of like, oh, um, Lucia will start the block and she'll do these and then I'll do this block. And it's kind of about, you know, um, scheduling and prepping because I'll be prepping an episode while Lucia is finishing a, directing an episode. And it kind of helps us leapfrog in terms of getting stuff done. So it, there is a lot more sort of boring, you know, production logistics that influence it. But, but I do prefer being um, behind the camera when I'm not in front of it as much. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And also I imagine that your experience as an actor, not just on this show, but um, across your career really helps you as a director behind the camera. You know, I, I, 
am so lucky that I know what it's like to get direction and to get notes because I think it really helps me speak to actors. Um, it really, you know, gives a shorthand to what I do as a director because I know how I would do it as an actor. It also gives me a target because being, being an actor, I'm like, oh, I know how I would deliver this joke. So how do I get the person to do that music and that rhythm and that timing right? Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's been, it's, it's really rewarding that I am able to do both. And that's true of, of Lucia as well. Lucia came from performing. So I think she also has that um, quality to her direction, which is so helpful for me as an actor. You know, when I'm on camera and she can say things that are performance-based, it's so helpful. And it it's so noticeable. You know, when you're in, when I'm working on other projects and there's a director who's more visual and who thinks about things maybe not from a performance first perspective. Um, it's really different. And that means you're, you're, you as an actor are kind of figuring it out more on your own, which has its you know own merit and its own fun. But it is really helpful to have someone like Lucia direct me as an actor because she knows how she would make it funny. And she knows, especially now after all of our years of collaborating, how she feels I would make it most funny, knowing that you know what's in my toolbox. That sounds so lame, right? What's in my toolbox? Cut. It fits. It fits. Uh, before we turn to your performance as Jimmy on the show, I have um, some questions on that because it's such a fun performance. Um, I do want to ask you uh, about your Emmy win for writing last year. A belated congratulations on that. Um, can, can, can you take <clears throat> us back? Can you take us back to that moment? Um, your very funny speech, uh, not a surprise that it was entertaining, but, you know, take us back to that when, and now that there's some distance from it, you know, what does it, what does that recognition mean to you, um, you know, a few months out? You know, it's so surreal. We were so honestly shocked. I think you can tell that we were shocked. And even though it was clear that we had a little bit of a bit planned <laughs> in, in them saying we didn't write anything in me saying I did, we really didn't write anything because we didn't think we were going to win. And so it was very ironic. Um, but it's so gratifying that the show um, was something that people connected to. You know, it means a lot to us. You know, it almost feels like cheating that we are writers and we're writing about a writer, two comedy writers. Um, and to have the writing branch recognize the writing in the show is just, it's such a, gratifying thing we feel really lucky and we really appreciate that you know people recognized it um so it was really fun and then when we sat down <laughs> because we hadn't worked on anything but she said well wait what if I win <laughs> improvise you got to improvise um and she did but anyway it was it was really um it was really pretty pretty thrilling yeah absolutely um okay so I want to ask you about playing Jimmy, one of the things I love about the character on the show is just watching Jimmy get exasperated. So I wanna ask you as a writer too, you know, what do you imagine Jimmy does in his personal life to cope with all of the incompetence that he's dealing with on a daily basis? Well, you know, he's an LA kid. So he does a lot of acupuncture. He does a lot of self-soothing. He does a lot of acupuncture. Um, you know, he gets a massage every now and again. He does tons of therapy, although his therapist as you will learn, because I don't think, I don't think anyone's gotten the last couple of episodes, but his therapist has Lyme's disease. So he hasn't been able to go in. So he's had a really rough year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to watch Jimmy get tortured. I like to say the show's about, you know, a tortured manager and his um, difficult female clients and really difficult assistant. So. Yeah. Let's talk about Kayla, your very difficult assistant. Um, Cause the season continues to pair you with uh, Meg Stalter, which is always a joy to see. Um, and again, as a writer, you know, you work on so many of these scripts, so you know, what's on the page, but what is Meg bringing to the performance that, I mean, I have to imagine she's catching you off guard, even though you know what will be coming, you know, at your character. Um, it just feels like it's so spontaneous. So what is it like working with Meg? I mean, Meg is a live wire and she's so fun to work with. Um, we, uh, we write toward her strengths. So uh, the majority of it is, is very scripted, but because we know what Meg can do, um, I think, you know, it, it does allow her to have a lot of fun. And so we have a great time. We really, we, 
make each other laugh a lot. We break a lot, which I think Lucia um, wishes we did less. <laughs> a little bit like, okay, okay, guys. But uh, yeah, it's great. And when we do have moments to be loose and um, because we come from an improvisational background, you know, like I said, Lucia and I um, started as performers, we're performers first. We still consider ourselves performers first. Um, I think it really lends itself on set to us getting to be loose and have fun and find things. And, you know, we're never, um, cause I think there's a difference between sometimes you can see things and you can see where, um, actors have kind of had a really long leash and have kind of gone wild. But the one thing that's really great about, um, Meg, and it's, it's the way that I try and work is that when we are improvising and trying new things, it is within the lane of what the story is and what the scene is. And so luckily it's always usable because sometimes, you know, there can be someone who improvises something great, but it's so out of left field that it isn't. So that's one thing that I think is a real strength of um, really all of the ensemble, everybody in the show does this, that when there there is um, playfulness, it's always in character and it's always really committed to the character voice. So it's always usable, which is really great. Okay, two, be two brief questions before we wrap up. Um, okay. One, Ava has really left you kind of in a, a precarious situation at the end of season one. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, what does Jimmy see in Ava that wants, that he wants to stick with her despite, you know, the headaches that, that she's causing him? So, you know, in the show, uh, Deborah is kind of, kind of a legacy client that he inherited from his father. His father had all these clients, some of which he inherited because they stayed with him, some he did not. Ava is somebody that he saw you know, that he found, he's, Ava's kind of his discovery and he really believes in her talent. So even though she is a handful and continues to make his life difficult, he really believes in her in the same way Deborah does um, because she's really good. And so he puts up with it. Um, but I hope this season you see that Ava does evolve. I hope that you see that all the characters evolve and grow and get better. So hopefully they do that together. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And finally, since nobody's seen the episodes yet when this interview will air, um, just to tease people, uh, oh. what, is you, what is your favorite episode of the season? What, which one should viewers look out for as Paul's favorite episode? You know, because of that, so this is gonna air before the premiere. I believe so, yeah. It, it's kind of hard. I, I've been asked this before and it's a little bit hard because I, the, the, premiere episode there's a big ufc fight there's fight night in vegas which is really fun and we have some great cameos and it it's such a different vibe for the show um but also i really love the finale the season finale is really a special one too there's a lot of great turns and a lot happens for jimmy uh so selfishly selfishly that might be my favorite it's either one or eight so the book well, ends. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the season finale myself. Um, Paul, congratulations on the second season of Hacks. And thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Okay. Of course. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.